Now, Wolf is here to talk about basically two of my favorite things combined together into one presentation, and that is uh, physics engines and cool physics demos and live coding, um, bo which is kind of crazy to combine together, but, but that's what he's doing. That's so uh, I am that crazy. He is crazy. Can you hear me, everyone? No. Hey, use the mic. We, we, we got a live stream. Oh, you've got uh, I'm, I'm already I'm, I'm, I'm famous on the internet already. OK, uh, so let me start presenting. How about? So I'm Wolf Thompson. I'm a developer programs engineer. And I'm going to be talking to you about Liquid Fun, which is our open source physics engine that we released in December. And as of today, is at version 1.0. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. All right. So. Just, to, just to, to give you a little preview, I'm going to talk about physics engines. I'm going to do some demos. I'm going to actually code in front of you a little bit. So if you want to watch a Google engineer screw up, this is your moment. Um, and I'm going to talk about some inspiration of what you could be doing with a physics engine like this. So how many of you guys are engineers? Anyone? How many of you guys are uh, artists? All right. So. Most of you probably at GDC know what a physics engine is. It's a system for generating procedural animations, in this case, physical processes. Uh, the one we're talking about today is steppable. That means that we move time a little bit forward, a little bit forward, a little bit forward. And if things overlap, we deal with that physical process in some way that looks believable. And we also try to do it in real time, although you could, I guess, use this uh, offline as well. A uh, physics engine does not include rendering code. Uh, although, in fact, we do include rendering code in our test bed. But we would expect you guys to, to use your cool art and engineering skills to render all, of these, uh, all of this stuff in an awesome way. Um, Liquid Fun is based around Box2D. So if you've, uh, you've probably seen this demo. And I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between, whoops, between demos quite a bit. So uh, you've all seen this kind of Box2D sort of looking thing, right? You know, it's like a crank. It's a slider crank. It's got like a, 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 a box and another box, and they're hitting each other. And there's like a couple of joints, and they're cranking around. And that, that's Box2D. And Box2D is really awesome. But what Liquid Fun adds to Box2D is lots and lots and lots of particles. So, ooh, and this is a live simulation, so I can throw these particles around. They can do cool stuff. These particles can interact with rigid bodies. So uh, we can have them all throw around and look pretty awesome. Uh, we can do color mixing. So uh, here we're going like, to take this, this, this stir here, and we're going to stir this up. And we're going to get sort of a uniform gray. Uh, and we can do a lot of other stuff. We also do buoyancy. So the uh, squares are light, the, uh, are uh, not very dense, the circle is dense, and then those two little arrows there at the bottom uh, don't displace enough particles to be floated. Um, we got a lot of other stuff, and I could go on for a long time about this, but uh, that's the idea. Particles. Particles are awesome, and they can make your game better. So heading back to this. Doink. So essentially, Box2D, an existing thing, liquid fun, is more on top of Box2D that gives you all of these awesome particles. Uh, it's cross-platform. It's written in C++, which means you can do it on Android, yay, yeah. yeah. also Linux, OS X, Windows, iOS, whatever you bring to the table. Uh, and we're working on some more stuff. Uh, we're working on a Cocos 2DX integration, which means you also get Android and iOS and OS X and Win32 and like BlackBerry and all kinds of great stuff. Um, uh, Daniel Murphy has of JBox2D fame has ported this all over to Java. So in fact, if you go to JBox2D.org right now, it'll just say you know Box2D. Well, actually, Liquid Fun <laughs> in uh, in Java. So we've added all these particles. How do they work? So a Box2D rigid body is an arbitrary size and an ar arbitrary shape, and it's got rotation. And a particle is basically the opposite of that. It's uh, uniform. It's always the same shape. It's a circle. It's uniform size. And it has no rotation at all, which means if you were rendering them, they'd all be pointing the same direction, uh, even as they moved around. Um, they're also packed into memory in a particularly efficient way that makes them very fast to render. So if you've got to render a whole lot of stuff, you've got you to you plan ahead for that. Uh, particles have color, size, position, velocity, all the regular physical stuff. 
They also contain uh, strength, which is how much they, uh, they want to be next to each other. And we'll show you how that works in a second. Creating a particle, if you, how many of you guys have ever done any Box2D work? Anyone? Yeah, you got some guys out there. This is going to look really familiar. Uh, a particle def is like a stamp. So you say, I want to make water particles, and I'm going to, this one I want to be at position, you know, I0. And then you call create particle, and it stamps one out for you. And if you want to make another one, you call create particle, and you set a different position. You keep going. Um, that's going to get uh, the number of particles I just showed you in the dam break. That's going to take a really long time. So we give you particle groups. Particle groups create and destroy lots of particles at the same time. Um, it also adds properties all at once. So you could have like a shape that's a big square, and it's spinning, so it's got rotational velocity and angle. And then you can also set the strength, so if you can have them all uh, work together as a group. Again, we'll get to that. Ooh, foreshadowing. OK, so particle behaviors. Uh, I just showed you water particles, but we also have powder. We have viscous particles which were ones that like to, they like to stick to each other. Powder particles don't like to stick to anything, so they're going to act like smoke. Spring particles, imagine all your particles are connected by springs. Elastic particles, all your particles are connected by, well, actually, it's a little more complicated than that. It's how much they want to retain their shape. Uh, wall particles, they don't move at all. That sounds kind of lame, but it's actually really cool, and I'll show you how. And today, Liquid Fun 1.0, Barrier particles. Barrier particles are like you, you spray Scotch Guard or something on the particles. Like nothing can interpenetrate uh, a particle, a group of barrier particles. Static pressure particles. This is kind of if you have a whole bunch of particles together and you spawn them all at once. If you don't get them exactly spaced apart just right, they're going to sit there and bounce a little bit until it comes to rest. Static pressure particles take care of that for you. Uh, particle lifetimes. So if you're making fountains, that's going to be kind of awesome multiple particle systems. So you can have a single particle system with all these particles interacting with each other. You can also have several layers of particle systems. So if you have a volcano way in the background that's doing a thing, you don't need those particles to interact with anything else. So you can put that in a separate particle system. And it's better. Uh, <laughs> you should check out our release notes. Uh, we could, I, 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 it could get really nerdy with you. But trust me, it's way better. So here's the scary part. This is one I'm going to code a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be using Xcode plus Co Cocos 2D iPhone and running it on iOS. And as a Googler, that means I have a great commitment to cross compatibility. Uh, uh, but we have this all running for Android and C++. And in fact, I'll be pro uh, we're just doing it all in C++. Uh, and the, there's going to be the same in either language. So let's start with the standard Box 2D implementation. So I go over to Xcode here. I hide you, because I don't need you anymore for right now. And here we go. Oh, thank goodness, my build succeeded. OK, so oops, uh, command two. OK, so this is your standard box 2D going on. When I click, I drop a box, and it, they kind of ricochet off each other. So let's add, some, let's add something to this. Let's add a particle group. Now, I'm cheating a little bit, because I actually I practiced this beforehand. So I just I coded it up. Uh, so when you create a particle group, whoosh, you get a lot of water. And that's kind of cool. And if we go back to my slides for a second, what we did there is we created a particle system. And creating a particle system is like, hey, world, make me a particle system. And you set some default, pro uh, default properties on the particle, so radius, uh, density, things like that. Um, then I created a particle group, which means I take a standard box 2D polygon shape. Uh, I set it as a box in the middle. And then I tell I want to make water particles. I want to set all the colors, uh, all the particles in this group to be the same colors. And then I call create particle groups. So we can have these groups. And I keep talking about strength. And this is where I, I make good on my foreshadowing. You can also make jellies out of these things. And what you do then is you say, instead of making water particles, I want to make elastic particles. And instead of, uh, and then I add a group flag to it, which means I want them to be solid, which means I, want, I don't want other particles interpenetrating my group. I'll tolerate it for a little bit, but eventually I'm going to reject it. So let's take a look. Get rid of this. Oh, no, let's leave that on there. The water's kind of fun. But let's, let's instead of when I click, I'm going to add a jelly. So here we go. We're back. And I click. And oh, yeah, it's all gooey and weird. Um, and you can set how stre the strength, how much you want all these guys to be uh, touching, how, long, how much they want to be together. And you can see if I, uh, I actually accidentally made gameplay in here. 
One thing that turns out to be really fun is trying to stack these as high as possible um, without, uh, see it fell over. Uh, <laughs> um, and also, these, part, these are, uh, because they're solid particle groups, they don't want to interpenetrate. So if I kind of put them on top of each other, they'll eventually separate themselves. So they don't want to be part of this. And uh, you can see gravity and stuff is acting on all of this elastic that, that's keeping them together. So that's kind of cool. And that's like a game right there is like stacking like these gooey things. And again, you can stiffen them up or make them totally blobby. But I don't know. I thought that was really cool. Uh, if we, let's stop doing that, though, because it's too silly. Instead, we're going we're gonna to throw down a particle emitter. So whoop, go back to my slides. Weak. When you're making a particle emitter, uh, it's a little bit more code. And in fact, we give you a sample one in our sample code. But basically, every step, you count out how much time has passed, and you figure out how many particles per second that you want to pass, and that, or that you want to emit, and then just uh, you know, stamp out that many using, uh, using create particle. And in this case, because we want it to feel like a faucet, we give it a starting velocity. Because when you turn on your, your faucet, the water doesn't, isn't just like e suddenly exist and then sort of fall into your sink. It's being pushed by a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to give it a, a, a starting velocity. So if we uh, head back to Xcode here, I'm going to turn on my particle emitter. And when I run it, we get particles flowing out here. And these particles will you know, kind of push around these boxes, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you can see here I actually have different, you know, different particle groups. I have the blue particle group and the white particle group. And they're mixing. And they're perfectly happy because they're not trying to be solid. Um, but the problem here is uh, this isn't all that much fun. I mean, I can kind of stack and have stuff. Eh, it's not that. So let's go down to where we create our particle emitter. And instead of having the water start flowing downwards, let's just fire it off to the right really fast. So when we do that. You get, now you got this stream. And uh, since they're being distributed randomly across a horizontal line, it ends up just being a jet going this way. And so if I throw particles in, well, that's, that's, that's not really strong enough, is it? Ah, what we need is heavier particles. So we can find the particle system and say set particle density. And oh, look, I happen to have written this and commented it out. Uh, and let's set it to something big. And we can also set the default size of the particles up a little bit. I'm going to make them bigger. They're not going to render any bigger because we haven't changed the renderer, but I am going to make them sort of mentally bigger. So here we go. We do this. We've got that same thing. Now you can see the particles are spaced out a little bit more. And then when I drop one of these things in, ah, here we go. Now we have a game. Now we're like, how many of these can I? Ah, shoot, I was really good at this when I was practicing. I can get three of them stacked up over here. But uh, here, there's one. Two. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. Yay! OK, so <laughs> you, again, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, but in all seriousness, you know, here we have, we have an, uh, another kind of gameplay in here. And uh, just by making these jets of all these particles running around. So let's, uh, <laughs> all right, let me stop coding because it's getting too silly. Let's head back to our, uh, 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 head back to the slides. And, and what you saw here was me creating a particle group and a particle system, uh, creating elastic particles, and creating a particle emitter. Uh, we have sample code for all of this stuff. Check it out on our website. Let's talk about what you can do with this. Now, when I was thinking about all the different ways, and my, my, my teammates were helping me think of crazy ways to use, uh, use a particle system, we were thinking about different modalities, different ways you can group them thinking about this. So obviously, what we just did there was moving things with jet. So you could imagine you know, Flappy Bird being sprayed up and down instead of just flapping up and down. And that would be like a different thing and kind of weird. Um, uh, mini golf being played with fire hoses instead of regular mini golf um, could be scary, could also be fun. Um, you could stir a fluid to move an object around. So you can think of like a bathtub full of rubber ducks, like trying to get the rubber ducks to go someplace. That's something. Um, and you could also use the particles to push things, kind of like a rocket. And I just happen to have a demo about that. So if we head back to this guy, here's one of the demos that we made during, uh, during one of our internal hackathons. Where's Sparky? There's Sparky. So in Sparky, uh, each time these rigid bodies, which are the, the big circles, touch each other, 
they, uh, it, it creates a particle group that's packed really tightly together, and then it has velocity all facing outwards. So as a result, you get this explosion, and then we give it trippy colors so you can sit and stare at it while you're, while you're waiting, you know, your screensaver's on. But uh, this is kind of cool, and you can imagine having like rockets being propelled by creating particles that are pushing against it and driving it upwards like that, and we give a really interesting locomotion. Okay, let's go back, slides. Uh, we can also do uh, water as a destructor. So putting out fires would be an obvious sort of thing. You can imagine sitting there, like, you know, having to tap on your screen to try to make the water get high enough to put out a fire on a different floors. You'd have multiple particle systems, so the fire is on one particle system, the water's on another. Uh, the tidal wave that ate San Francisco, you can, you know, you could attach a bunch of rigid bodies by, by joints that break easily and then hit them really hard with a bunch of high density particles and I guarantee they'll get knocked all over the place. Speaking of knocking particles all over the place, uh, you could say just have like a, like a little stick figure here and then you could, you know, blast them off into space and that would be kind of awesome too. Oh, poor guy. Anyway, uh, going back. Uh, the <laughs> we, you could also imagine fluid being sorted. Now, uh, there's, you know, Where's My Water is a game in which you dig to sort of sort and control where you, water, where you, water, where you want the water to go. Um, the demo that I, was ma that I made was drawing uh, things that allow you to control where water is going. And again, uh, th there's a game in here. You could have like red emitters and blue emitters and you're trying to decide where they're going or, or, or something. You get a pumps pushing them in different directions. No matter what, I, I think there's something there. Uh, think about fracking. Fracking is basically a particle system. Because what, when you're fracking, you have basically a big matrix with lots of little holes in it, and you've got a bunch of stuff that's fluid that you want to get out of it, and you're pumping some other waste product in there to shove that into some straw that you're sucking out of that. And we actually made a little, little fracker game, and we just barely explored it, and it was totally fun. Uh, going onwards, oh, here we go. Um, think of water as a medium. You know, so rather than controlling the water or pouring the water, water is just the thing that you're traversing. So a buoyancy game, obviously boats, boats are in water, that could work. I think surfing is probably a little bit more interesting because there you're interacting with the sort of the angle and the wave and the pressure and everything. Uh, water as, uh, fluids as terrains, you know, if you have cars and mud, and I just love this picture because that dude totally parked in front of the horse. But the, the thing about that is um, you know, that also brings up legged animals. So if you had some sort of legged animal that was like trying to stumble through that, wait, I actually wrote that. Um, so we go back here. Theo Jansen's uh, walker right here. Uh, this is a very famous Box 2D uh, demo. And all I did was add like a particle emitter that emitted snow, so sort of light fluffy particles. And already a couple of kinds of gameplay come out of this. One is that he can carry it around on his head, as you can see. And another thing is that he actually acts as a little snow plow. And I mean, I'm from California, so I don't really get snow, but I assume this is how they move snow, is like giant legged beasts that wander around like this. Uh, that's what I'm told. Anyway, um, but I, I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's a really interesting, there, this, this is like already gameplay kind of spilling out of this as I was just goofing around. Uh, lastly, bottom line is this. If you're using Box 2D, like how many of you guys are using Box 2D in your game? Anybody? Yeah. All right. You're basically liquid fun ready. Um, to do the Cocos 2D uh, uh, thing that we did, we basically just like went into the Box 2D folder and like deleted the old one and pasted the new one on top. And it's the same folders and the same headers. It's just an extra directory called particles that implements all of this particle stuff. Um, an hour is maybe a little bit of exa exaggeration because you still have to do a renderer. We give you a sample renderer, but I think you're going to want to make a better one. Um, and, you know, think about that Android. So where do I get it? You can get it from our GitHub page. If you want the Java version, go to jbox2d.org. And if you want anything else or if you have questions, you can email me and I will respond to them. We also have a Google group where you can ask questions. If you want technical questions, that's probably faster because I, I do sleep from time to time. So <laughs> and plus our engine team uh, reads it and they're super happy to answer your questions. So one more demo. Very last thing I'm gonna show you. All the demos I've shown you up to this point were either in the test bed or they're in that Cocos thing where I was rendering all the particles as little squares. That's not, sup that, that's not as good as it can look. So instead, uh, I'm gonna show you the eye candy demo and this is actually an early version of the eye candy demo. The new one's even better. Uh, but what you got here is 
beautifully rendered particles, same physics. And here there's even some, there's even some memory in the, in the image. It's a multi-pass renderer, so you can actually see like, like smearing out over time. You can also do transparency. That looks kind of awesome. At least I think it's awesome. So there you go. That's liquid fun, and we want you guys to use it. Uh, drop us a line if you, if you have it. It's open source. Try it today. Thanks so much.